thinking produces a new way of living. This is when change happens. This isn't going to happen overnight, my friends. This is the process. It took me a long time to stop cussing. When I, when I, when I gave my life to the Lord and I got saved, it took me a long time to stop cussing. I came from that lifestyle. That was a pattern in my mind. Right? It got to the point where I stopped saying the really bad words and only said, started saying some like real bad words. And then it got to the point where I, I only would say a bad word but I hurt myself or just really just frustrated, you know. And it got to a point where I wouldn't say it no more verbally but I'll say it in my mind. And then it got to a point where I started replacing certain words with good words, right? So it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. The same way when these words change you, your household ain't going to change overnight. Come on. Right. Hear me. We must allow the word of God to change us, change the way we talk, change our emotions, change our attitudes, and really walk with the fruits of the Spirit. Because if you walk with the fruits of the Spirit, your family will walk with the fruits of the Spirit. If you walk with the fruits of the Spirit, your family will walk with the fruits of the Spirit. That's very, very important for us to understand the key to breaking the curse of Adam's sin and the consequences of our family, our parents, our grandfather's big grandmother's sin is found in Jesus Christ. That's the key. It's not found nowhere else. It's not found in counseling. It's not found in small groups. It's found in Jesus Christ. Right? Any person who was born again in Jesus has been made brand new. You are no longer under the curse of any sin or any punishment. You are made new. The curse has been reversed. Amen. The curse no longer has effect over your life, Joanna, because you said yes to God. Amen. The curse no longer has effect in your house, Lena, because you said yes to God. The curse no longer has an effect in our houses or our families because we said yes. So just because we said yes doesn't mean we've experienced it yet. Come on. Just because a couple gets married doesn't mean they know everything about marriage. Right? You can do all the studying you want, all the research you want. I thought I had it on lock before I went into covenant with my wife. I did a lot of studying, I studied covenant, I had the word, I had the knowledge. Right, good, we're gonna be good. And then we have a baby and then another baby. And, and, you know, you gotta be very kind of pastor and go through the motions. And, but at the same time, I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Because you know how many patterns that I broke within that season? You know how many patterns that I broke within that season? Allowing myself to be vulnerable to God, crying to him, saying, God, I don't want to be like this no more. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to talk like that. I don't want to think like this. God, break this out of my life. I don't want this. He says, son, it's already broken. He says, son, it's already broken. Give it to me. But we hold on to what he breaks his feet from. Naturally, that's what we do. Because you know why? We find so much identity in that. That's why. We still hold on to it because we find so much identity in that. Because for some people, that was the reason why some of our friends kicked the us. So we like that part of us. We, we find so much identity in these broken places. You ever heard that saying? Broken people hang out with them. Broken people. Broken people find so much identity in their brokenness that it's hard for them to get healed. Because they love the attention they receive from being broken. That's a pattern. But you pay attention, their mom is the same way. Yeah. You pay attention, their grandma is the same way. Yeah. Why? Generational curses. It stops with you. It stops with you. Come on. It stops with you. This is where you draw the line, woman of God, and say, everything that I ever went through stops with me. It will no longer, it will never transfer into my children. And even the damage that, that happened with my children, I declare that the word of God will redeem it and in Jesus' name. That's the power of the cross, right? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. 
and the old is gone and the new is here. The Bible says that when you receive Jesus into your life, you become new. In other words, you are no longer born of Adam. You are born of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ. You are born. You are a new creature. And you are not an upgraded version of yourself. You're new. Pay attention to that. You are not an upgraded version of yourself. You're new. That's the reason why whenever you try to do what you used to do, you don't feel it. Something on the inside of you just... You feel the Lord saying, don't do that. You feel the Lord saying, don't go there. You feel it. You feel it. And you can choose to ignore it or you can choose to be obedient. But you feel it. Why? Because you knew. You never had those convictions before you came to Christ. When you came to Christ, now you have those convictions. Why? Because you knew. You knew. Amen. You're born again. He gave you a new mind. He gave you a new heart. He gave you the ability to do everything He placed inside of you. Understand, Jacob, you're not waiting for no one to give you nothing. Everything you need is already in you. Amen. You're not waiting for nobody to give you anything else that you're sitting in your heart when You know, man of God, when, when God, when God created a seed from an orange tree, we don't see it. We see a seed, but inside of that seed is a force. Inside of that seed is the ability to produce a tree, to produce more fruit, to produce more seeds so that they can multiply. That seed doesn't need anything else to be added to it in order for it to be who it is. It, it already has everything inside of it. Now that's how we are. Everything that we need to be who we are is already inside of you. Wow. You're not waiting for anything else to happen to you for you to have it all. You already have it all. Mm -hmm. The problem is these patterns get, get in the way of us believing we deserve it. Because my mistakes, I do this, I still struggle with this, I still battle with that. God says, hey, I fought a fight for you 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. You can't overcome that addiction. You can't overcome that anger. You can't overcome that frustration. Give it to me. I'll do it for you. Now change the way you think so you can change the way you speak so you can change the way you live. Because every true believer has a life. And their life is not displayed by their words. A life is displayed by what? Their works. <laughs> not by the word, by the words. And not by and not by why they do something, but how they do something. Fruit. Fruit. You can do everything in the church, but if your heart ain't right, it's not why you do it, it's how you do it. You can hide your motives from everyone else, but you cannot hide your motives from God. You see, God knows what you say, but he also knows why you say it. God knows why you don't say what you want to say. God knows the motives. He's a discerner of the truth, the heart. He knows. So he can fool everybody in the house. He can't fool God. That's a pattern. That's a defense, defense mechanism that we created so that we can have authority or be in charge. Lay that down. Lay that down and humble yourself because those who exalt themselves, God will. And those who humble themselves, God will exalt. You and I were born under a curse. We were born under a consequence. And the curse of the original sin and the consequences of our family's behaviors. But the good news is this, church. The good news is this. That that sinful behavior and that sin that was passed down generationally, those ungodly behaviors, once we're in Christ, once we're in Christ Jesus, we begin a new family heritage. We become new when we're going to start a new legacy of walking with God and bringing our generations to walk with God as well. When we come to Christ, when we come to Christ, we build legacy. God is about our family. God loves you, but He wants your family. God loves you. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's a generational God. Amen. God loves you. He loves me. He loves us. But he wants Elijah, he wants MJ, he wants their kids. God wants the blessing of his son Jesus to not just be with me, but to be on them. And be on them. That's what God wants. He wants his blessing of his son to be on Jeremiah. He wants the blessing of his son to be on Peter, to be on Jaden, to be on Adrian and Sito. 
God wants the blessing of his son to be on Zaki. God wants the blessing of, of his son to be on Destiny and Lexus. God wants the blessing of his son to be on our children. Yeah. But it first has to be on us. Are you with me? Because we belong to him, we can transfer our family line into generational curses, into generational blessings. When we are, when we are in Christ, we are free. We are free in Christ to walk in the newness and to walk in freedom, regardless of whatever happened before you got here. I don't care if you chug the 40 before you walk in the door. God loves you. And this, this invitation is for you. Yeah. That everything that's been conquering you, he has already conquered. Yeah. And everything you can't seem to break, he already broke for you. Yeah. Everything that's been trying to kill you, he's already killed for you. <laughs> because we have him, we have victory in Jesus. So I encourage you, every single one of you here today, let us walk in that victory and change the course of our family's future and our generations to come. We have the ability to change the course of our family. Reina, come on now. We have, we have the ability to change the course of our family. Think about that. You have the authority to change the course of your family. All because you said yes to Jesus. All because you said yes to Jesus. And that ability doesn't change when we change. He is faithful when we are faithless. He is faithful when we are faithless. When we make mistakes, His grace shows up. He's still there. He doesn't leave when we leave, Ophelia. He don't love like we love. If someone leaves me, I'll leave them. That's not God. If I leave God, he's going to stay there. Amen. He's going to walk with me. He's going to be on my leg. He's going to be here telling me and encourage me. He don't love like the way we love. He loves different. And he loves us so much that he doesn't want our children to go through what we went through. So he gave his son to break the curse till we cut the curse. Amen. So that we can become the blessing of the Lord. Amen. He wants us to be free here and here. God's more concerned about our hearts and our minds than he is the way we look and dress. He's more concerned about this. You can look beautiful on the outside. But he don't look on the outside. He looks at the prophet went to go anoint one of Jesse's kids to be king. So the father brought out his oldest to his youngest, but he didn't even bring David to the place. He brought out all his kids that he thought was qualified to be anointed. He brought out his firstborn first, the warrior, the big one. One that looked like Adonis Creed in Creed 3. You know what I'm saying? That's the big one, the solid one. He looked huge. He, got, he had the hair, he had the muscle, he had, he had the strength, he had the deep voice, he had everything. He was the one that man would choose. God says, God, God said, the, the prophet said, no, not him. Do you have another son? He went down the line, all his sons. And the, the father Jesse was tripping out, and like, what do you mean? He said, oh, my son, there must be someone else. I know I heard the word. There must be someone else. And, Je and Jesse, she's like, well, but these are all the ones that I would choose. And then God says, see, but I don't, God don't look on the outside appearance. God is looking at the heart. And although they might be qualified by man, they're not qualified by God. God's not looking for someone who looks good. God's not looking for someone who's challenged.
the program, the platform, the microphone, the serving. He doesn't care about all that. You know what he cares about? He cares about a horse. Amen. And he doesn't want our hearts to be affected by these patterns, by principalities that were established years ago. That Jesus already broke. Huh. The things that we are living out, Jesus already broke. That's the reason why he said that the word is life. That's why he said the word is life. It gives you life. It's a medicine to your soul. It gives you life. The word is the way, the truth, and the life. It teaches you how to live. It teaches you how to walk. It teaches you how to speak. It teaches you how to love. It teaches you how to be faithful. It teaches you how to lay your life down. The word is the instruction, the word. When it gets inside of you, it begins to transform you. We must not just get in the Word. We must allow the Word to get inside of us to change our being. And we're changed. We can come to church our whole life and miss God. We can speak in tongues, prophesy, cast out devil, work in miracles, deliver people, still miss God. He said, they will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Cast it out devils, I filled the sick, I filled the I fed the community, I served, I did this, I went Facebook Live, I went Instagram Live, I made a TikTok, I started becoming a motivational speaker, I did this, I did that, and God said, Away from me, you work with iniquity. I never knew you. You knew me, I didn't know you. You never opened up the room for us to get equipment. You never opened up the room for us to have fellowship. It was always about you. You used my name for you. Way of thinking, pattern. But I believe that today, every curse that's ever affected your family is broken in Jesus' name. And you receive that breakthrough right now. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because he already paid for it. It's not anything you can earn, hobby. It's not anything that you is at your life to, to run you through this assessment test to see if you qualify for it. No. You already qualified for it. None. Because you're a sinner. Amen. Because Christ came to save the world. Amen. The Bible says when we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for us when we were at our best, when we had the credits for it. No, He died for us when we were still sinners. When we were in Adam, He died for us who redeemed us. He loves us that much. And not, only, and not only just us, but He loves your daughter that much. He loves your son that much. He loves your grandchildren that much that He goes beyond us. He goes to our families because He loves Carlos. Because He loves yourself. He wants to put that blessing on you so that it transfers over to you. It transfers over to our generations. It transfers over to Annie. It transfers over to our behalf. The blessing of the Lord. That curse that was targeting you has been deflected by God. God has been broken by God. Has been dismantled by God. So that you no longer have to live in that pattern. But if you don't get truth in your mind, you will naturally gravitate back to that pattern. Wow. Did you catch it? Yes. If you don't get truth in your mind, you will naturally gravitate back to that pattern. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get back into your word, man of God. Get back into your word, man of God. Get back into your word. That's the key. That's the key. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God, David. Hey, Zinni. The word of God. Yes, sir. That's the key. You know why we still struggle sometimes? We spend so much time away from the word of God. That's what we should do. The word is water. Our heart is 
is the, is the soil. You know what happens to soil when it doesn't get when it doesn't have water? It dries up. It dries up and gets hard. So when you stay away from the word of God and you come to a service like this and you haven't been in your word, it's hard for you to receive the word. Because the seed's being planted, but it's hitting hard ground. Get in the word. The word of God breaks up that ground again. It adds soil. It moisturizes that ground so that it can become soft and fertile. So when the seed is, is casted out, it begins to grow and produce fruit in your life. Amen. You need the word of God. We need the Word of God. The Word of God can't just be a devotion. It has to be your life. The Word of God cannot just be a caption. It has to be your life. The... So I pray that today, every curse is broken in your life. And that you will grow a hunger and an appetite and an appetite for the Word of God. That the Word of God will go inside of you and it will begin to produce good fruits. That the word is the seed sown into your heart. And that you will be the good ground that will produce 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. That you will produce the fruit of Christ. Amen. That your fruit will look like him. Your fruit won't look like me. Your fruit won't look like pastor. Your fruit won't look like spirit no church or other churches. No, your fruit will look like him. Amen. Will look like Jesus. Amen. So let us stand to our feet for a moment. There's some things that I just want to release before we dismiss. At this time, the children may be dismissed. They may be dismissed.
They carry our spirit, what we do, good or bad. Amen. Right? Yes. The way we talk, they talk. Yes. Our attitude? Yes. Five-year-olds got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Yes. Right? So what we don't deal with and what we don't kill ultimately transfers over. Right? Uh, Understand this. It transfers over, but it multiplies. Uh, Think about that. David had a problem with one woman. His son had a problem with a million women. It multiplied. David committed adultery with a woman that he seen showering in his, king, in his kingdom. He struggled with one woman, but his son had thousands of wives. Because what you don't deal with will transfer, not only transfer, but it will multiply. Mm -hmm. I want to bring the seriousness of what we hide into the open. You feel me? I want to bring the seriousness of what we hide into the open because what we hide will multiply and transfer in our children. And you don't have the power to stop it. You can treat them the way you want to treat them, talk to them. You don't have the power to stop it. You know who does? Jesus. He's the only one that has the power to stop and break and reverse that thing from transferring to your children. And you know what he does? This is so beautiful. Because a lot of people come, come to Christ with already having kids. So they've already spent years of building a certain system or pattern in the children's life. Christ redeems it. Christ redeems it. He, he does it in such a way as if it never happened. He does it in such a way as if it never happened. Let's open up our Bibles to Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. We have it on the screen for those of you who didn't bring your gun. You stay strapped in the house, amen? amen. <laughs> you stay strapped with the word in the house. And the Bible says, and, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many of you know what the will of God is for your life? One of the biggest questions. How many of you really know what the will of God is for your life? Are we here tonight? You look guys are looking around like, are we here tonight? And we're going to touch up on some things, but you're going to get delivered here tonight. You're going to be healed here tonight. And you're going to be set free here tonight. Are you here? All right. The Bible says to be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Be ye what? Transformed. By what? The renewing of your mind. Last week, we, we, last week we discovered that the battle is where? Right. It's in our mind. It's in our belief system. It's in what we believe. What we believe we will be, right? That's what we learned last week. And today we're learning that the battle is still in your mind, right? And the enemy, what the enemy does, Sister Susan, is the enemy has created patterns in our minds. They're called ways of thinking. And what we do is we justify them by this phrase. This is just who I am. Woman of God, that is not who you are. Man of God, that is not who you are. That's what the world says that you are. You are no longer of this world. You are born of God. Are you with me? Another translation says this. It says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Right? Do not be conformed. So the world is a way of thinking. The world is a pattern. It's a way of thinking, right? Are y'all here tonight? Amen. The world is a way of thinking. It is a pattern. And the way the enemy works, I need you to pay attention to me really good for us tonight. Because let me tell you what. The Bible says to study the enemy so you don't be surprised of his advice. You don't be ignorant of how he lives. Be ignorant of how he shows up in your family. To study the enemy to know. You know what made Muhammad Ali one of the greatest boxers? He spent more time watching tape of his opponents than he did in the ring. You study your opponent, right? Okay. You got you to know his tactics. So one of the ways the enemy works is he establishes a pattern in our minds to keep us from being changed. That's what the enemy does. The enemy doesn't want you to be changed, but he don't have the power to stop you from being changed. He don't have the power to stop the Word of God. The Word of God is the most powerful substance. It's the most powerful force in the whole world. In fact, everything that you see came from the Word. 
Everything that is, is because the word is. Now, one thing that came to be did not come from the word. Everything came from the word. The word is the most powerful power in, in, in the universe, right? And the word has a name. And his name is what? Jesus is the word. The, the, the devil cannot stop the word from coming to pass. He can't stop the word. But what he can do is create a pattern. All right. And the enemy will create a pattern to establish a hindrance in your life. Right. So you won't be able to change. Right. Are we good to hear? Are we good? Yeah. All right. So the enemy establishes patterns in our minds to keep us from being changed. These patterns are established by principalities. Come on. Okay? Right. I don't really teach on... I don't really teach on like demonic warfare. I don't really teach on the different spirits. Honestly, I don't even care about how many different spirits there are. I only care about one spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Come on. I don't care about all their names. I don't care about all their functions. I don't care about all their systems. Because at the end of the day, they all bow down to one name. And that name is Jesus. I don't even know about Leviathan. I don't even know about Python, Jezebel, or Twin Sister. I don't care about them. I don't care. I, I know people who know more about demons than know about the cross. That's the problem with our generation. I don't care about all I care about Jesus. But I do have to go a little bit deeper into this, this word principality here today. Okay? These patterns are established by principalities. Right? And principalities create principles. Okay? Principal, principalities, their jobs are to establish principles. Right? And what is a principle? It is a rule. Right? A principle goes into a school to establish the rule. Right? So a principle establishes a rule. But that word principle produces a pattern. Right? And that pattern is a way of thinking. So a principality's job is to establish a principle. That principle produces a pattern. And that pattern is a way of thinking. Right? Now understand that the devil can't be everywhere at once. The devil is not God. You were not finding the devil last time. You're fighting a way of thinking. You were not fighting Jezebel last night. You were fighting a way of thinking. Okay? The devil could not be everywhere at once. He's not God. Only God can be everywhere at one time. You look over there, God's there. You look over there, God's there. You look outside, God's there. That's not the way it is for the devil. The devil can only be at one place at one time. Okay? So you, you ain't fighting the devil. Okay. Are you with me? I need to get some theology. There's some false doctrine going around in the church. I was fighting the devil all night, brother. Really? Out of everybody in the world, the devil stopped to fight you. <laughs> There's high ranking. The devil ain't everywhere at all times. He can't be. It's impossible for the devil to be everywhere at all times. So he, that means he can't fight everybody at once. Think about that. The devil can't be everywhere at all times because he can't fight everybody at once. Are you with me? Yeah. So what does he do? He's smart. No, he don't even send demons. You know what he does? He establishes a pattern in our families a long time ago. He established a pattern in your great, 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 great grandma. That's what he does. He establishes a pattern in your family. A long time ago. So that we can live out. He established these patterns a long time ago. So we can live those patterns out in our life today. So that these patterns can ultimately transfer into our children. And our children's children. What we don't stop today will transfer over into our children. It is a pattern that has been established by a principality years ago. Okay, now, there's different types of patterns that these principalities establish in people's lives. Like that one family where everybody's just gang members. Everybody's a gang member in that family. A demon's not there every day fighting them. No, a principality established a pattern years ago. Right? 
and, and it comes out through lifestyle, it comes out by words. How you talk to your children matters. How you talk to your husband matters. How you talk to your grandkids matters, right? So these ways of thinking, ultimately what you think you're going to speak. How you speak manifests that pattern. How you speak manifests that pattern. And how you walk manifests that pattern. Are we here today? So you can say you're, you're, you're one way, but I'm not looking at what you say. I'm looking at how you live. I'm not looking at how good it sounds. I'm looking at how, how, how good you can walk. This is where transformation comes. True change doesn't come by words. Change comes by actions. When actions change, that's how I know you're changed. You can tell me you're changed all, all the day. But if your actions don't change, you ain't changed. What's stopping it? A pattern. A way of thinking. A lifestyle. And that's what these principalities do. These principalities call these patterns that stop us from changing and ultimately transfer into our children. And that is called a generational curse. A generational curse isn't a demon. It's a way of thinking. Can I clarify some stuff? I feel some people getting... I feel it in the spirit. But I need to talk about this because wrong theology will cause more damage to your walk with God. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Say generational curse. Generational curse. Now a generational curse is simply this. I'll, I'll specify it for you. So you can know that a generational curse is a passing down of sinful, of sinful behavior that gets replicated in the next generation. That's what a generational curse is. It's sinful behavior that gets replicated in the next generation that's passed down. A parent doesn't just pass down physical attributes. A parent doesn't just transfer how they look. Are you with me? But a parent passes down spiritual and emotional attributes to their children. Whether they know it or whether they're not. That's why your son does things the way you do it. Your daughter does things the way you do it. Right? Physically and ultimately spiritually. Are you with me? That's the reason why don't be surprised when your daughter or your son starts doing things that you don't like. But things that you don't like in them ultimately are the things that you don't like in you. Because that came from us. Y'all here? Yeah. All right. I'm ready to go ahead. These attributes can be seen as a curse. And in most cases, they are. However, they are not a curse from God. Understand that a generational curse is not a curse from God. God didn't curse you. God didn't curse man. No one in the Bible did God curse man. Are we here today? Amen. God didn't curse man. God cursed the ground, right? It says, meaning that God didn't put this on you. They are a result of a sinful behavior that's been transferred from the fall of Adam. Okay, let me help you guys. Romans 5.12. This is how the curse entered in. This is how the curse entered in. The Bible says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people, because all have sin. So the curse came because of what? Sin, Right? And the Bible says that because of Adam, when we are born, we are born in what? Sin. We are born in sin. So the curse is there when we are born. Okay? That's the reason why I'm not surprised that people act up the way they act up. We were born that way. I'm not surprised when people create gossip. I'm not surprised when people are rude. I'm not surprised when people are mean. I'm not surprised when people backstab. I'm not surprised at any of that because that's natural to them. Right? That's why the Bible tells us we must get what? Born again. again. When we get born again, the curse no longer affects us. The curse is broken when we are born again. Right? Amen. Every single curse is broken when we are born again. These are one of the benefits of the cross. This is how we stop living out where our family lived out. This is when we change everything. This is when what, it happens to everyone else. But the moment it got with you, somehow it just stopped. How does that happen? How does that happen to us? It went with everybody in your family, but the moment it got with you, it couldn't transfer over to your children. How? Because you made a decision. Amen. You made a decision to believe in a man named Jesus who gave his life on the cross with your sin, bore your curse on that cross so that you could live a healthy, free life today. Amen. You made a decision to believe. How crazy are we to believe in a man named Jesus that will take your curse upon himself? Therefore, just as sin into the world with one man, you want you want someone to blame? Don't blame your grandma. Don't blame your mom. Blame Adam. Blame the fall of man. 
5, 17 through 18. The Bible says this. For if by the transgressions of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification for life for all people. Amen. For just as through the disobedience of one man, many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man, many shall be made righteous. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. the Bible's a good book. You should read it every now and then. The Bible says that because of the fall of man, because Adam fell in Genesis, Genesis 2, because Adam fell, sin entered and the curse entered the world. And everyone who was born after Adam had, was born into sin and born with the curse. They were cursed. That's the Bible. But the Bible also talks about here another man. Another man that just as when Adam when Adam fell and sin came into the world, everyone who came after him was a sinner. But the Bible talks about another man who was born, died, he was who was born, died, rose again, sat on the right hand of God. That everyone who was born after him is no longer a sinner. They have been made righteous. Now the curse that was applied to Adam is no longer applied to Christ. Are you with me? The curse that was applied to Adam is no longer applied to Christ. And Adam is not just a person, but Adam is a place. Jesus is not just a person. Jesus is a place. He's a position. That's how you can be seated in Christ. He's a position, right? So everyone seated in an Adam, they're born after sin. And they carry the curse. Everyone who was born again and born of Jesus Christ is born into righteousness and no longer has the curse, but what do they got? The blessing of the Lord. Oh, okay. This is beautiful. Galatians 3, 13 through 14. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. The Bible says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole or a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The Bible says that cursed is the man that is hung on what? On a tree. The curse that we fight with, that curse is a generational pattern, the way of thinking. It's the way our grandma thought, our mom thought, and it was the way they talked to us that created a pattern. It created, it, it normalized. Like, I talked to so many people, they know that screaming at your children is normal in our generation. Yeah. Cussing at your children is normal in our generation. Our generation doesn't affir affirm the kids. They knock them down. That's normal in our generation. So you know what's going to happen? When they have kids, cussing is going to be normal to their kids. Y'all hear? What's happening in, in our families before us, what we grew up in, became normal. It got normalized. And that created a way of thinking. That's the pattern. That's what I'm talking about. Because our grandmama and our grandfather, they like to gossip. They like, to, they like to do this, they like to do that. It's normal for us to do it. It created a pattern. Now when our kids do it, don't be surprised. Are you with me? Amen. But this is the beautiful thing about Jesus, is that he looked at you, he looked at your family, he looked at everything you went through, he looked at the curse, and he says, you no longer have to live another day in your life with that curse affecting your family. Give it to me. Amen. What your family went through, you're not going to go through. What you went through with your family, your children are not going to go through. I get it. They didn't know how to talk. I get it. They didn't know how to affirm you. I'm going to teach you how to affirm your son. 
What we didn't have, we make an excuse of. Well, because I, I didn't have my dad, so he didn't teach me how to talk. So it's hard for me to talk to people. It's hard for me to talk to my sons. It's hard for me to talk to my daughters. Okay, I understand that. But the curse, it redeems you. And he teaches you in your secret place by the word of God. And he teaches you how to tell your son, hey, you know what? That was a good try. I'm so proud of you. Even though you didn't do it, I'm here and I'm watching you and I'm with you. And we're going to get it. Get back up and keep moving. We, we got to get to this place where we stop justifying our actions because we didn't have this or we didn't have that. We got to start taking responsibility for who we are as human beings. Amen. And allow the cross of Jesus Christ to change us from the inside out. We must stop being a people who only change from the outside but still look the same on the inside. We must be a people who is transformed from the inside out. And the only way we are transformed from the inside out is when we allow the word of God to get into our way of thinking. That's the only time we're changed is when we think different. It says be not conformed to this world but be ye what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. When our mind gets renewed and you stop thinking that, that you are that you are worthless, when you stop thinking you're never gonna amount to nothing, when your when, when your mentality starts to change by the word of God, your actions begin to change because let me tell you something, there are some mothers in here who don't feel like good mothers because they allow their words to beat them up. But I think that's Just because you're going through it doesn't mean you are it. 
The difference between a situation is you can be in the situation, but in the situation you have to be in you. It doesn't. You could be going through it, you can have something, but if it has you, that's different. You see, we gotta stop allowing what we go through to define us. You are not your situation. You are not your past. You are not what your family said you are. You are a mighty woman of God. You are a mighty man of God. I don't care what the family says. I don't care what the judge says. I don't care what your ex says. I don't care what anybody says. If God spoke a word over your life, then you still are what God says you you are. Be honest and who doesn't see it. I don't care if your ex didn't see it. I don't care if your family don't see it. If God said it over your life, then I see it in you. Because why? Because whenever God speaks and affirms a thing, So I can't allow, or you can't allow, what you've been through to justify, because I hear that all the time. Well, I didn't have this, so it's just the way I am. No. That's what you're choosing to say. Because the Bible changes us. Be ye transformed. That means you're in the process of metamorphosis. You, you are in the process of metamorphosis. You're in the process of being transformed from one nature to another nature, from one way of thinking to another way of thinking, from one way of speaking to another way of speaking. I have to train my mind to speak positively to people. I literally have to read the book of James and sit myself down and say, you need to stop speaking negatively to people. You need to speak better. Amen. When you grow up in the hood, you don't speak positively to your friends. <laughs> right? I have trained myself by the word of God. So now when I, when, I, when I see the brother, when I see the sister, when I see my parents, when I see the brother, brother, you look good to you. I love that best. I love that little tiny brother, man. That's fresh. I'm able to encourage now. Why? Because a, a, a mentality, a way of thinking changed my mind. This is what I'm trying to implement in your life. You don't have to have a repeat of what you went through in your family. Amen. I get it. We weren't dealt the best cards. I get it. We went through some things that none of us should have ever went through. We grew up with families that we shouldn't even, we shouldn't even, you know what I'm saying? We went through some real things in life. We went through, but those things don't have the power to define you. They only have the power to define you if you let it. Come on. That thing is a part of your testimony. You not having a dad is a part of your testimony. You growing up in that broken family is part of your testimony. You not you not trusting your family for all those years are part is part of your testimony. Why? Because when God changes you, man of God, there's a promise Amen. that if I serve the Lord, me and mine. Um. Shall be saved. That doesn't mean everybody under your roof. That means everybody with your last name. Bloodline. That means everybody with your last name. Not everybody under your roof. Everybody with your last name. One way or another, they're going to find their way to know Jesus. Why? Because God, all of His promises are what? Yes and amen. All of His promises. And His, He promised you that if you come to Him and give your life to Him, you and your whole house. Shall we say it? Amen. Amen. Since it's promised. Sometimes, now let me get a little deep. Sometimes we're the reasons why our family don't come to church. Yes. Come on. Oh, why don't I go to church? You still always talk to me like that. Why am I going to go to church? You're always mad. Why am I going to go to church? You don't even look happy. Why am I going to go to church? You're screaming all the time. Like, what? You're telling me you met this great God, but yet every time I see you, you mad. I don't want to go to that church. Come on. <laughs> you telling me to go to church and you won't be defeated. Wow. I don't want to go to that place. What are you building? No. He's a great God. Come on. But we have victory in him. Amen. For the power of the blood of Jesus. Believers must stop believing. Living beneath who we are. And the way we do that is by allowing the word to establish new patterns. New way of thinking produces a new way of living. A new way of thinking produces a new way of living.